in fact, uh, uh, Mr. Fine, we haven't had you on in the last month or so since that incredible video that I know you and Congressman Ron Paul spoke about. So I've seen your comments, but I'd like to hear them here. Let's start there before we get into Ron Paul, and then uh, and there's some points you want to go over. What do you make of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman, the Secretary of Defense, Panetta, going before the Senate Armed Service Committee and saying, we don't come to you to launch wars now, we get it from the U.N. So it's bad enough of the president, like Caesar said, I'm in control of the military, the Senate can take a hike. You know, that, that's Rubicon behavior. But, on, but imagine if Caesar said, I work for the Gauls, or I work for the Visigoths now, or, 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 or I work for the Persians. That would be high treason, would it not be? Uh, I mean, this is beyond uh, Caesar-type activity, as bad as Hitler was, absolutely terrible. Uh, Hitler uh, you know, was the German dictator, but, but imagine if he would have been saying, I have the authority from Stalin. That would have even been another level, or am I incorrect in common law, common sense, constitutional law? What do you call it when the president sends letters last year and says, I'll launch wars when I feel like it. How dare you criticize me? I have you in authority. And now the military belligerently tells Congress uh, that they can basically go jump in the lake. What What are you advising Congress on right now? Well, that's, in fact, one of the things that I've done in the interim. I've drafted a House concurrent resolution. It's 107 for your audience, introduced by uh, Walter Jones, that at least has Congress stating quite unequivocally it is an impeachable offense, a high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution for the president unilaterally to initiate the military uh, in, in, in offensive warfare. Uh, so we have you know, a clear declaration. You have now basically violated your oath of office and need to be removed. Uh, if he ever acted, he's already done, he's already acted on that way in Libya. And most recently now he's, 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 he's what we would call uh, unrestricted uh, predator drone warfare in Yemen against even unnamed targets that we're reassured are high-level, high-level officials like the 16-year-old son of al uh without any congressional authority whatsoever. And notice also, uh, Alex, when we were reading in the last week about the proposed 10-year extension of the United States military and economic aid to Afghanistan running from 20,000 and 14 to 2024. There we have the headlines. The parties that have to ratify the agreement that still has details, it's listed as President Hamad Karzai of Afghanistan, the Afghanistan Parliament, and President Obama. And the Congress doesn't even make a cameo appearance, you know? It's like they have been reduced to an inkblot in the constitutional system when they're supposed to be the, 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 the check on abuses and, and uh, empire mentality that causes the budget to skyrocket and, and engage in these uh, fool's errands that make us less safe and create enemies. Uh, and, I mean, it's, it's really almost, it makes me speechless uh, to know how clear the founding fathers were on entrusting these national security responsibilities to Congress because they distrusted the executive's inclination you know, to go to war, to concoct conflict, because the executive gets all the power, the secrecy, the money, the spending, the jingoism, and whatever. And to see that intent turned on its head. And then when the what's even more stunning than your chronicling of what the, the military and the chiefs of staff told Congress is, I said, if someone's standing up and said, sir, because you can impeach members of the military and who also have official uh, duties and, 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 and that, as well as the president, you have now announced that you are not loyal to the Constitution. We're going to impeach and remove you from office. You'd expect at least some murmur of that kind of re Nothing. I mean, isn't it stunning, Alex, that no one in Congress entrusted with the responsibility to remove these people lifted a finger or said anything at, at all adverse in, 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 in light of the usurpation? Constitutional, constitutional law expert, advisor to Congress, advisor to Ron Paul, as chief policy advisor Bruce Fine, uh, constitutional lawyer, joins us. Well, that was my point. I should have said that in the uh, introduction. I was aware that you authored... Uh, the uh, piece of legislation for Walter Jones, we had him on, and in fact, that's why I wanted to get you on uh, to uh, to discuss that, because there's no one better at the center of this actually resisting it. I know Ron Paul has criticized it, and he said there are many impeachable offenses, but this is one of them. Uh, but 
uh, absolutely. In fact, that was my next question to you, but you just asked me. What has happened to Congress, uh, Mr. Fine, that that the Joint Chiefs were belligerent? I would say Panetta's uh, attitude was arrogant and belligerent. We're watching treason. We're watching the overthrow of our constitutional system in front of us. Basically, the equivalent of a dog hiking its leg on us, you know, marking its territory. And nothing ever came of it except for your resolution and a few House members signing on to it when this should be one of the biggest issues of our time. And it's part of a long train of these lawyers uh, in D.C. who are clearly trying to set the precedent that the war powers uh, no longer resides in Congress. No, no, it's, and, and, and it is worse than, than just the presidential usurpation, you're right. Uh, at least then, we still have the president who at least nominally is an oath to have his allegiance to own the United States. But then, this concoction that the United Nations and the Security Council of the United Nations can authorize and tell the president what he can do. I mean, the Supreme Court is quite clear. In a case called Reed versus Covert in 1954, the Supreme Court held a treaty cannot trump the constitutional rights and checks and balances in the American system, meaning that a treaty cannot override the exclusive power of Congress to decide to go to war. And I don't care how many, well, whether there's a U.N. treaty, so what? The Constitution trumps the treaty. Uh, the treaty must be subordinate to the Constitution. You know, otherwise, you know, could you imagine us signing a treaty that says all the signatories agree that no one shall have freedom to criticize any government that's ruling in office, you know? <laughs> there goes our First Amendment rights. Oh, well, you know, but, but the, the, the U.N. has agreed to it. You, know? <laughs> you can't do that. I mean, the treaties then can be used to destroy the entire constitutional framework. Well, look at the Unidir Treaty that countries have signed on to. It says, I've read the quote, it says civilian ownership of firearms will be abolished to defend the legitimate power monopoly of the state. They're saying the state needs a power monopoly and that that's legitimate when that's the opposite of what our system set up on. Yeah, exactly. And they say that those, those treaties are subordinate to the Constitution. If there's a conflict, the treaty has to yield, not the other way around. And now when we're on this, the war issues and others, oh, no, you just have to you know, get a treaty and... And, and, and ratify it, and then the, the, the Constitution out the window, and then the loyalty of the, the president is to some international body that we have no control over. It has no loyalty to us. It doesn't pay us any taxes. It doesn't obey our laws, which is insane. Well, we're going to break in a moment. I want to come back and get into other issues, sir. But what do we... What do you recommend we do? Get behind the legislation you wrote? That yeah, this, this, yeah, this is really, Alex, the, the, the instruments are there. The instruments to redress this are there. It's just there's no political will. So what do you do? You write into your member of Congress, say, you support House Resolution how can 107, and you better impeach it. And, and if Obama goes to, well, he already has. He's gone to war against Libya without congressional authorization. And if he does it, he'll put threaten. If he does it in Iran, he's, he's going to be impeached. You know, and it, it says, well, but that doesn't bring jobs. Well, you know, listen, I'm in favor of, of, of economic prosperity, but some things are more worth, you know, are worth more than just dollars. And it's our own dignity, our only right to govern ourselves. It's checks and balances. Now, if we don't have that, all the money in the world you can't take with you, you know, in your dignity once you have your epitaph there. Well, as you know, sir, it written. is... Sure, it is liberty, though, that, that brings the prosperity. Every time you get rid of liberty, the prosperity disappears. Yeah, absolutely. Or uh, it, where it goes is to those with the crony capitalism is where it goes. You're exactly right. You know, it's some, some prosper, but not because of their, their industry and, uh, and ambition and creativity, but because they manipulate the political system in their favor. You know, that's the TARP money, that's the entitlement programs, that's all these military you know, boondoggles out there spending trillions of dollars, you know, on trying to defend against an asteroid that might hit the next time Halley Comet comes around. American. You know, that's, that's not, that's not li liberty. Is, you know, working... Your, your own skill, your own, it's your Thomas Edison type. That's liberty and prosperity. It is. AmericanFreedomAgenda.org will tell you about his latest book as well. Bruce finds our guest. He is the chief policy advisor for Ron Paul. Stay with us. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power.
all available at InfoWarsShop.com. Bruce Fine, constitutional lawyer, author, his uh, latest book, American Empire Before the Fall, is joining us. This is a short segment with Bruce, long segment coming up, and we'll get into the whole IRS, domestic checkpoints, government building up for war with the people question and then your calls but your letter to the new york times got published i'm i'm surprised they did that but but they also had an article about uh the fbi creating fake terror threats and and basically false flags so i guess i guess the new york times understands that they don't start telling the truth some they're going to lose all their readers i guess the market is having an effect i, I noticed congress is talking about a um Contempt citation against Holder over Fast and Furious. Now we learn it's hand grenades being shipped down there to blame the Second Amendment. Uh, just a lot of things happening, but uh, tell folks about your letter because it breaks down this chain of events that we seem to be going in that, that empires uh, like elephants go to a certain place to die. Yeah, well, I mean, the letter really pivoted off of a, really a good article by friend Charlie Savage, a reporter of the New York Times, pointing out how Obama was unilaterally circumventing Congress on domestic issues, you know, whether it's the student loan program or a whole host of things that he does through the EPA or otherwise because he can't get them through Congress. And I pointed out in the letter, well, that that's one thing, but he, he doesn't even make you know a, a, an attempt, even a shadow of an effort to consult Congress uh, with regard to national security matters. And the point of the letter was to show this isn't not a unique phenomenon with Obama, although he sort of reached the high watermark that ever since World War II, beginning with Harry Truman's unilateral war against North Korea, Eisenhower had unilateral defense treaties or executive agreements with Spain. We had the, the, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin resolution with Johnson, and we had with regard to you know, President Clinton, you couldn't get a war resolution against Bosnia, so he did it unilaterally. And we have Bush with waterboarding in the Iraq war, and, and now we have Obama with Libya and claiming he can go anywhere in the world and kill any American citizen he wants with a predator drone if he thinks that they're an imminent threat. And that this is a very grave threat to who we are as a country, I say. The glory of the republic, in the words of John Quincy Adams, was liberty. We didn't go abroad in search of monsters to destroy our influence abroad was the influence of example and having a, a true dedication to due process and liberty at home. And now we've swapped that American republic where liberty is our glory to one where empire and the glory is domination and permanent warfare. Uh, and that's where we are, you know, today. And just, just think, Alex, you read the newspapers, we've got troops, you know, chasing the Lord's Resistance Army in Africa, you know. You know, they're in Central African Republic, and we're thinking about invading Syria or dropping bombs there. And then we have a new escalation of predator drones in Yemen. You know, and we're still have troops, you know, in Afghanistan. They're and launching Africa. drones all over the U.S. Did you see where they're ordering hundreds of armored mobile pillboxes for the highways and 450 million 40 caliber bullets? And uh, they've got TSA now at checkpoints just everywhere. Uh, I mean, what's going on? No, Alex, that, you know, it's a brilliant observation you made because it shows how prescient James Madison won when he said, you know, all of history teaches that the instruments that are developed to fight danger from abroad are invariably employed at home to crush domestic liberty. And that's exactly what we're seeing. All these things that, oh, we, we have to develop all these weapons because we need to keep the battlefield, you know, 9,000 miles away. But now you're making the battlefield America. And indeed, that is what Lindsay, Senator Lindsey Graham, when he voted in support of this National Defense Authorization Act that entrusted the president with authority to use the military to take any of us at any time to Guantanamo and say, hey, we're, we're providing some uh, material support to a coalition, uh, uh, a member of al-Qaeda, is that Lindsey Graham said, oh, the battlefield used to be abroad, but we're bringing the battlefield here to the United States, which is a sense saying, hey, we've got martial law here. And that's, that's what invariably happens. You think that you can keep these foreign instruments in foreign uh, lands, but it, that's not how the law works and the precedent works. It comes back to haunt us right here. You're right, predator drones, surveillance drones, checkpoints, everything is subordinated to safety. And that's one of the important things that we need to remember, that this oftentimes proverb is that you can never be too safe. Yeah, you can be too safe. If the reason why you're safe is you've locked everybody up, you know? Then you've destroyed the whole purpose of having your country. You've destroyed liberty. You know, I don't want that safety. You have to take some risk in life or liberty to have any oxygen.
Cuba. Well, Cuba. sure, and, and any government that can totally surveil to, quote, keep you safe, historically it always becomes the ultimate destroyer. I mean, look at government killing. Uh, major universities, the University of Hawaii did a study on democide, government killing its citizens. Non-military deaths, 20th century, 262 million people governments killed with the communist and Hitler and Pol Pot. I mean, government is the biggest unnatural killer and the biggest wrecker that, 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 of anything out there. It's the dangerous thing. As our forebearer said, it's what you want to keep locked up. It's the danger. Stay there, sir. We're going to come right back. Long segment coming up. We'll get into the rest of what you see happening. And Ron Paul, stay with us. All right, we're going back to Bruce Fine here in just a moment. I wanted to read to you a few of the headlines at Infowars.com. The ultimate green bombshell. New study finds wind farms cause actual climate change. That's Patrick Henningsen. They also don't work very well. They've bankrupted Spain. They're a big part of that. International scientific order needed to facilitate the big die-off. That's a quote. Top UN advisor. By the way, that's in Reuters. <laughs> They're saying, the collectivists are saying, shut off the economy, bankrupt things because humans are bad. Post-industrial world, you cannot make up this magnitude of craziness. Uh, NSI. Instructional video says public photography is terrorism. CBS runs defense for everyone's a terrorist. FBI flyers. This is the twilight zoning of America. And also, uh, trail of death. Breitbart coroner turns up dead. Arsenic poisoning. But the police are saying that uh, they don't think he committed suicide, so they are looking at foul play. And by the way, it turns out it is the coroner that did Breitbart. So, wow. Uh, twilight zone uh, indeed. And we've got some other crazy uh, news up there. Uh, you know, when they passed the NDAA and Obama signed it, when he said he wouldn't sign it, and then, he, then we learned he demanded the provisions be there. It, it, still, even I was pinching myself. But we ask ourselves, why is the elite able to do this? And I think it's the dependency. They know if they get a giant dependent class, the American people, one way or the other, around half are dependent on a government contract, government welfare, something. How do we ever extricate ourselves from this when around half the people out there are dependent? And, and I understand they took your money, blew it, and then keep you dependent because of Social Security. I mean, I understand they force you into it. But the point is, how do we ever get out of it? Do, do things collapse or in the process of collapsing, do we go through an authoritarian nightmare as they try to keep it going? Bruce Fine, constitutional law scholar, best-selling author, top policy advisor to Ron Paul, is our guest. What do we do about this dependency? I mean, close to 50 million on food stamps. Uh, they're talking about the uh, new bailout being a student loan bailout. Sh sure. Uh, I mean, we're going to go bankrupt. How much money can we spend? Now, you know, entitlement programs over two trillion dollars, you know, a year, and and that's just it's not sustainable. And everybody's got to, you know, everyone's got to live in a much more austere um, fashion. And just remember, if we cut back for everybody, that means you got to you pay less taxes, so you have more of your own money, you know, to spend. Now we do, as any any nation would have a safety net, but the safety net ought to be really the bare necessities. Uh, but otherwise. And, and, and I say this with all sincerity, Alex. You know, in some sense, the government deprives you of your own dignity by making you dependent. Because your real character, your real metal, your real self-esteem comes from struggle, from making it on your own, from overcoming difficulties uh, that, at, at birth or otherwise. And if you've never faced those challenges, you can never develop true character. You, in some sense, you become stunted. And so it's really, in, in my view, sort of a disability to be born you know, a, 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 a son or child of a Bloomberg. You never have any stresses. You're going to be a very soft person. And what gives you the strength to, to go through the peaks and valleys of life and, and stay you know, afloat and, 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 and demonstrate your character is precisely the ability you know, to overcome struggle. And the government deprives you. They, they make you into a dwarf when they just say, oh, don't worry, you're not accountable for anything. We understand how soft and weak you are. Oh, here's the money. Here it is that, that makes, it, it makes it all right for you. I mean, and that's, 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 that's poison, you know, to individual dignity. 
Well, I agree with you. It's poison. And dovetailing with that is the report last week where the Labor Department was going to ban, and I read the regulations on air, any basic farm work with, quote, raw materials, grass, hay, seeds, eggs. I mean, that is the family farm, and I've worked on a family farm. I've been sent to our family farm on summers, one time for a whole year of school. I worked on ranches for a large animal vet. All of the youth work, you have a good time doing it, you end up making money as well, and that's how you learn the next generation. That shows this dangerous collectivism where the government was going to ban farm chores. I mean, this is incredible. Yeah, it was. I think if you if you had any electricity, even on a drill, you know, you couldn't you couldn't keep doing it on the farm. And then they said, well, they were worried because it wasn't just always on your own family. Because I had relatives out in Lamar, Colorado, too. And so I grew up there, rolling hoes of of uh, corn and, and and weed and whatever, getting all these tickets in your ankles. And, but you learned, and it, you 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 learned the discipline, and you got the money to go buy Pepsi Cola at the time. And sometimes it was your family, sometimes it was an uncle, sometimes it was. It was an aunt or some did more distant relative, uh, but the idea that you want to make that illegal when we're trying to cultivate the opposite, which is good work habits, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's got the world upside down here. Uh, and again, it's this other, it's, it's this idea that everything in life has to be absolutely safe. You never do anything that has the tiniest degree of risk. I say that's the first, that's the formula for decadence. That's the formula for defeating it. That's the formula for softness. You, you don't do things that are crazy, but, you know, you got to take some risk. They're prudent risk, and you have to be accountable for your acts. Well, look at photographs, Bruce. Look at photographs of, of any race, creed, religion. You look at photographs of Americans across the board from 100 years ago, even 60, 70 years ago, people had more electricity in their eyes. They looked dignified. They dressed nicer, even if they were poor. Uh, they wouldn't put up with being pushed around. And now you look at people, I go out in public, myself included, I'm a slob compared to my grandfathers. I'm weak. I don't know how to fix things like they d did. I don't have that joy of cleaning things and doing things that even my dad, who really grew up on a farm, has. And I just see people degenerating. Yeah, I think that's right. He, he's like American Gothic, you know, where's that, where, where's that uh, picture? You know, a small but, uh, but dignified, you know, not ornate, but, but quite uh, tidy and, and, and disciplined. And that's exactly what, you know, our, our culture says. It, it's, it's becoming a decadent. And it, it isn't just... Uh, you know, how many um, uh, Facebook pages you've got and how much Twitter you can do. It's your own character and your own discipline that's, that's at stake here. And, and again, we, we go back to this idea that we need to make everybody safe from themselves. Can you imagine, you know, our regulations that would exist if you know, we go back to colonial times of going back past the Appalachian Mountains? No, you know, you can't go in a, in a stagecoach unless it's been cleared by the transportation department to be safe, to, uh, safe and effective going across the Missouri River. You know, Lewis and Clark would have never even got close to the West Coast. You know, the, and they're the same. And no one reads history books and finds that there are all sorts of dead bodies on the uh, on the, the trails out there because they didn't know how to drive a, a kind of stoga wagon or things of that sort. I'm sure that there were accidents, but there are accidents all the time. No, and, the contrary, people were a lot tougher and, and, and wilier, and that's what built this country. Shifting gears before we go to some phone calls uh, here, Bruce, but it's in a similar area. Government is moving towards capital controls. Yeah, you know about the legislation where the IRS will take your passport, no judge, no jury. Uh, as a constitutional lawyer, uh, 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 I would like you to speak to that. I know I've seen some Supreme Court rulings saying you can't take somebody's passport. That's something uh, that uh, you have to basically give up yourself unless you're out on bond or something. So break that down. And how does that tie into Tenth Amendment, Ninth Amendment, Fourth Amendment, out of their jurisdiction, now TSA is all over the highways where I live, searching people randomly. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Well, first, with regard to the passport, I mean, we need to distinguish passport from citizenship here. You're absolutely right, uh, Alex, that the U.S. Supreme Court held in a case called the Froyum against Rusk in 1967 that the government is powerless to strip you of your citizenship. You know, it can do a lot of things to you, but... You know, unless you voluntarily renounce it, or actually sign a paper saying I renounce my citizenship, the government cannot 
a strip you of citizenship, but a passport is different than citizen. Uh, and but the Supreme Court has said you can't deny passports based upon your your political beliefs. There's a case called Samuel versus Rusk. You know, the, the government cannot be arbitrary in deciding whether or not I have a passport that enables or certainly facilitates your travel. <laughs> and now you want to say, well, okay, if the IRS says you owe them $5 in taxes, then they want to prevent you from getting a passport. I mean, that's something, of course, that Congress could could stop in a, in a, in a moment. Uh, and they should stop in a moment if the IRS is, is considering that. It's just a way of, of leverage for the IRS to try to claim taxes that have not been adjudicated, that they've just levied. And, and decided upon unilaterally. It's not like so. It's an extrajudicial, uh, Stalinistic power grab, from my view. Is that correct? Yeah, and, and, and in, in some sense, Alex, it's unfortunately not limited just to passports. The IRS laws really authorize them in the case they call jeopardy assessments. If they make up their own mind to think they need to levy you know, a huge tax on you, it would, you know, without informing you because they think you'll make an escape. They do that, and it's with no due process at all. You're, you can be shut down overnight with an IRS left now. And, and that's something, to me, that's quite dangerous. The U.S. Supreme Court has upheld it in special circumstances where somebody was trying to flee a jurisdiction, but I think that it's, it's vastly too great a power to entrust well, it just to shows, any government authority. Sure, sure, let me ask this way. Why are we seeing, and tell us if you agree, just a wild dash to power grab on every front, dwarfing anything I've ever seen. Why is it moving so fast? It's, it's, I think it's, it's Alex, a deep-seated in, in the change of our culture to one where liberty is the primary earmark, earmark and value in society, to one where we automatically, because of 9-11 and the government making us think that we're about ready to be overtaken every five seconds, the government making us fearful that our whole culture has accepted, rather like a docile cow, if you will, all these claims, intrusions in order to make us safe. And, you know, you just if you, I, I would wager, Alex, if you took the political dialogue today and counted how many times the word safe was used as opposed to liberty, now safe would outnumber liberty probably 10 to 1. I'm saying this is the earmark of what I call a, a psychology of empire, where everything is instantly subordinated to, oh, but it'll make you safer, oh, it'll make you safer, and therefore you just stop it. And, 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 and we don't have any leaders who will stand up and wait a minute. We can't make you absolutely safe without destroying your liberty. Sure, and who keeps me safe from from the big government? Yeah, exactly. You need to be safe from government because you're absolutely right. All the greatest horrors in the world are always perpetrated by government because they do generally have monopoly of the power, the taxes, the coercion, the courts, the military. So in between the possible danger of a private organization or a private individual and the government, the government is always the one that you've got to have special you know, uh, safeguards and, and suspicion against. Because all history shows how much more potent it is in, in extinguishing in extinguishing liberty. Sure. Uh, I, I want to spend some time on Ron Paul, but we're almost out of time. We'll do that right at the end to get your take on uh, the fact that, in my view, the campaign's already won by injecting real ideas and what's going to happen with all those delegates and if you've got any inside baseball on how they plan on using them or uh, where all that's going to go. Bruce Fine, Chief uh, Policy Advisor to Congressman Ron Paul, is our guest. Um, but right now, let's go to some phone calls. Dr. B, Sandy, Chris, and others, 800-259-9231. For Bruce Fine, Dr. B in Georgia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, sir, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to speak to both of you. Uh, you've been on a national level. I'd like to bring it down to a local level as it relates to Agenda 21. And I, I've heard I've heard Alex Hughes speak about Agenda 21. I've, I've read Rosa Corey's book, but they're missing part of the puzzle. How are they advancing Agenda 21 on the local level? They're doing that through what are called regional commissions or regional development commissions. This law that you mentioned that they're passing in Arizona uh, to stop you in Agenda 21 is basically worthless because their version of the regional commissions are called the Council of Governments, and that law addresses nothing. These groups get 45% of their money through the feds, through block grants. The granddaddy, you mentioned uh, DHS and DOD, but the granddaddy is HUD. 
No, no, I agree with you. This federal planning, federal following international treaties, the point is they're stating language to block the implementation of the of the different sets of the treaty, and it's a beginning as in, in, in Houston, they're trying to take people's property for environmental reasons, and the city council has a member trying to block it. My point is, at least people are waking up. At least we're seeing a movement towards recognizing the U.N. is trying to circumvent Congress, like Obama is circumventing Congress, with these regulations, just like the regulation to stop chores. I mean, uh, I understand that things aren't perfect, but... At least it's a step in the right direction. Bruce, what's your take on all these U.N. treaties they're trying to get cities to implement just by fiat? I think that we need Congress, and it has this authority, to say that no treaty of the United States shall have any um, effect inside the United States unless Congress authorizes the same. That is, treaties do not need to be self-executing. And that's what the U.S. Supreme Court has held in a, a different circumstance relating to an effort by the then President Bush to force Texas to abandon the death penalty as applied to a, a Mexican who wasn't told of his right to have access to a consular authority once he was arrested. Said, no, this treaty, the international world, the, the world court, didn't. its judgments sure. were not self-executing and Congress hadn't authorized it. And again, it's, so we can trace back all these abuses to the, what I call the virtual inertness of Congress. Do something. They can make it clear. No treaty has any impact on the internal regulation of the United States. Exactly, but it's worse. Sure, just to be clear, though, with Copenhagen, we didn't even ratify it, and Obama is implementing provisions of it through the executive. Uh, it, it's outrageous. What do you do about that? Well, let's say it's if the Congress can do use the appropriations power and split put no monies of the United States shall be expended in order to implement anything with regard to the very Kyoto treaties or international treaties or whatever. So there's no money to do it. Sure. You cut it off. Sure, let me tell Listen, I, and, and Alex, listen, I've gone up there. I, you give me one minute, I can draft a statute that'll do the work. It's just that Congress right now doesn't have the political will, and we need the American people to write into those members' office. Say, I'm not voting for you unless you do this, and you've got to make it almost a witness uh test. I agree with you. Listen, Dr. B, you sound like an informed person. I actually know what you were saying is true about these commissions and things, these regional governments that are totally unconstitutional. Why don't you write an article and send it to writers at InfoWars.com, and if it's of quality, and I look at it, and, and it, you know, it has little links in a bibliography, we will post it on InfoWars.com. So I agree with you. We could We could do a better job explaining this. Why don't you get that written and over to us, okay? I would be happy to do it, but before I ring off, I have one question for Mr. Fine. Fire it now. He'll answer it after the break. Okay, this regional commission has now uh, gotten the state legislature to pass HB 277. It's a Transportation Investment Act. It's a T-SPLOST. Yeah, I don't think he can answer your question about some state law right now. We'll be back. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. InfoWars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at InfoWars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Bruce, we were talking during the break, and you were making a point about Congress. Briefly do that, because it is important. And I want to jam in a few more calls for you, please, sir. Our, our ailments with regard to big government and the uh, invasion of our privacy and our liberty can all be traced back to what I call the inertness of Congress. It has all of the constitutional authority needed in order to restore the republic from the grasp of empire and big government and all this vast spending. And we focus so much upon the president. 
And the fact is, the remedy is right in our hand. Post the people out who continue to vote for these huge, massive budgets, permit the president to usurp constitutional powers, to claim the right to assassinate us and do all sorts of other things that the founding fathers would have been shocked at. Uh, and, and once we change the complexion of Congress, and once we have an impeachment, the president will never do that again. Uh, and that's, that's, what, that's what has to sure. happen. And don't get our eyes off the ball. And that means you, you focus on your congressman, you have witness tests and say, we want you to act, you need to be And that's up to us. I mean, we saw with the Tea Party before it got taken over by the neocons and people, that we were having a real effect uh, at these town halls and things. It's up to us, the people, to take our Congress back. Uh, let's jam in a call. Sandy in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Go ahead. Two quick questions. Okay, when Obama took the oath to protect and serve or protect our Constitution and defend it, along with the, all the others that are trying to break it apart with him, aren't they just as guilty as he is? And number two, if our votes this November are taken from this country into Spain by another company or something to be counted, doesn't that make votes void? Yeah, there is a lot of uh, manipulation going on in the vote. It's not total, but it's 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 certainly there. I appreciate your call. What about those points, Bruce? Well, of course, yeah, those who are helping the president are committing impeachable offenses, too. I mean, I served in the government. I had an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, too. Indeed, at one time, I was seeking the impeachment and, and removal of my president at the time, Richard Nixon, for the Watergate crimes. And, so, and, and, and that's why the Constitution empowers Congress to impeach and remove not just the president, but any other officer of the United States, whether it's the Penn Department or in any other... And the military or... has an oath to the Bill of Rights and Constitution, Declaration of Independence. Uh, they need to understand that as well and know what lawful orders are. Absolutely. In fact, the military, it's a time-honored rule. Uh, a, a knowing unlawful order must be disobeyed. Uh, and that's that, that's part of military. If they order you to torture, if they order you to torture, you better say no, because those that did it, they ended up being sent to prison. And then Bush wrote a book admitting he ordered it. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're exactly right. And the fact is, this is not novel. That we, in the aftermath of World War II, we tried lawyers, we tried it, judges, because they 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 did not disobey clearly illegal illegal orders from Adolf Hitler. And we sentenced them. We said that they were committing war crimes. Uh, so we have our own precedent at Nuremberg that should guide ourselves and restrain ourselves from ending up emulating all these other people. Well, empires. Bruce, people are waking up, but I, I think this is going to end badly. And, I mean, in the final equation, it, uh, the, the, the power structure is mad dog. I always thought that there was more structure to the corruption. And there certainly are some structures, but overall, it's a bunch of people out of control, power grabbing. And maybe that's our salvation, is that the elites are fighting with each other, and it'll be so badly organized, they won't be able to carry it through. But I think in the process, it's going to be pretty nasty. What do you say? Well, yes, but remember this, Alex. You know, there in some sense is no end. You know, the, 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 the world isn't going to stop. Countries have peaks and valleys, and this is what needs to be remembered, that every generation has to win liberty for themselves. You can't just sort of inherit it like you can inherit money. And once you lack that will as a people to defend courageously liberty and to stand up uh, to the efforts of those that you describe the elite that wants to use their power, now it's all over. And, and you, can't, you, you can't give that, you can't, can't give it like you can give a house. You, you, you know? can't. Bruce Fine, thank you so much. Freedom isn't free. yourselves what are you doing in this time of great challenge what are you doing to unlock minds